Our, our next speaker is taking it to uh, another level in terms of diet, and I'm sure all the kids in the room uh, can certainly, uh, and adults, can certainly relate to improvements that are needed in the diet. And so it's a pleasure to be able to introduce, it's one of the first NPKUA uh, funded researchers, uh, Denise Ney, who will talk about foods made in glycomacropeptides to improve the PKU diet. Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be here to tell you what I think is a very exciting story about how a new protein, a natural protein, glycomacropeptide, can improve the PKU diet. I also would like to tell you that I'm very honored to be a recipient of one of your first research awards. This um, is a new study that we're undertaking with GMP to look at bone development in PKU mice. Um, the mice will be fed from weanling through their young adult life so we can look at the development of their bones and compare it to mice fed an amino acid diet. Um, I also wanted to share with you that I know there's many people in the room that spend a lot of time fundraising uh, for PKU walks and different activities. And from my standpoint of a researcher, as a researcher, I'd like you to know that the money that comes from you means it's much more than the money, okay? Because what it means to my research team, graduate students, technicians, other people, it means that it sends a message that this research is important to you. It's important to people with PKU. It's very, very empowering. So remember that when you're working so hard. It's much more than just the money. To relax a little bit, do we have any Wisconsin Badgers in the audience? <laughs> yes. Erica Lesbrow, Stilton, <laughs> Kevin and Christine Brown, and many others. Well, you may recognize the Wisconsinites in the audience. You may recognize Bascom Hill. This is the hill that goes from Bascom Hall, the main administrative buildings, down to the Memorial Union is not far from here. Nice hill, right? Especially in summertime. Did you hear about our snowstorm? <laughs> On the night of December 8th, we had 18 inches. That's a lot. <laughs> and for the first time in 19 years, the University of Wisconsin, a small campus of 42,000 students, closed down. Now, the students made the most of it, and of course, they were a week off from finals and had a little tension to get rid of, and they organized a massive snowball fight, okay? This was a snowball fight between the Lakeshore dorms and the new fancy high-tech downtown high-rise dorms, several thousand students in each complex, okay? And there was a clear winner because the Lakeshore dorms, they claimed the high ground <laughs> on the hill. <laughs> so. I'd like to start by acknowledging uh, the very dedicated research team that's been working on GMP at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and also our supporters. Um, shown here is on your left is Mark Etzel, who is a food scientist, a chemical engineer, who 10 years ago um, really identified GMP and a way to isolate it from cheese whey. Um, myself and our dietitian, Sandy Van Kalkar, who many of you know, um, the senior metabolic dietitian at the Wiseman Center, Sally Gleason, who has now retired, also worked at the Wiseman Center, and Aaron McLeod, who is a graduate student of mine. We've been fortunate to have uh, funding from NIH, which, is, which enabled us to conduct our phase one clinical trial, which I'm going to tell you about today. Uh, we've also had fabulous support from the PKU community, in particular MACPAD and the Tennessee PKU Foundation. In addition, the Michauds have provided support, and all of this support, NIH money wasn't enough to do it. All of, it, all of this has enabled us to accomplish the research that I'm going to share with you today. 
GMP really represents a new paradigm for the PKU diet. And this is because GMP is the only known dietary protein that contains really only a trace of phenylalanine. This means that foods made with GMP, which is an intact natural protein, which happens to be enriched in the large neutral amino acids, which Catherine Mosley told you about, that foods made with GMP can provide a good tasting alternative to amino acid formula. And consuming that amino acid formula is often the most challenging part of following the PKU diet. GMP is a natural whey protein. It's produced when making cheese. And in Wisconsin, where 90% of our milk goes into cheese, <laughs> we have a lot of whey protein. <laughs> um, shown here is a vat of cheese whey. Now, pure GMP contains no phenylalanine. However, in the process of isolating the GMP, from the cheese whey shown in this vat, the GMP becomes contaminated with a trace of phenylalanine from the other proteins that are in the cheese whey. Okay? And so there is a little bit of phenylalanine in GMP. There's one company uh, right now, it's called Arla Food Ingredients, it's in Denmark and it sells a highly purified form of GMP. Contains two milligrams of phenylalanine per gram of GMP. We work closely with this company. They visit us, they've sent a whole team of scientists on two different occasions. They've come to Wisconsin. And Cambrook Foods, which is bringing some GMP uh, products to the market, is working closely with this company as the source of GMP to make the foods. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and you can take any intact or whole protein and you can break it down to its component amino acids. In this slide, we look at the essential amino acid profile of GMP compared to an average protein. And I'd like to make two points with this slide so that you understand more about GMP. The first point is that GMP is naturally enriched in non-toxic large neutral amino acids, which you just heard about. It contains very high levels of isoleucine, threonine, and valine. Okay? The second point is that GMP must be supplemented with, five, with a very small amount of five limiting essential amino acids to make it a complete protein for people with PKU. And those five amino acids are shown down here. Now, the Wisconsin Center for Dairy Research has produced a lot of very good tasting, low phenylalanine foods and beverages made with GMP. This is one of the advantages of GMP that amino acids don't have. You can cook with it. It goes into a solution. It has has good cooking properties where you can't heat amino acids to make foods out of them. They degrade. Um, and here we have a list of the foods. The crisp, the snack bar here was developed by Erica Lesperan Stoughton at Cambrook Foods, and Cambrook has been working with us on this project for, for many years. Also shown here is Jessica, who has PKU. She's helped us with our research. She's 11 years old. And I'd like to refer you to a 10-minute a TV program that was shown on Wisconsin Public Television. And Jessica's story is, is told in this 10-minute segment. And it's a, a very, very good story about PKU and the, the challenges of living with PKU. On the handout that's on your table, uh, for my abstract at the very end, it gives you the link that you can go to to watch this 10-minute segment. These are some photos of the high-protein, low-phenylalanine foods that we have made with, with GMP. These foods provide from 5 to 15 grams of protein and 
15 to 25 milligrams of phenylalanine per serving. Now, these are the foods that we developed and tested in our research. But at this point, I'm very happy to announce that Cambrook Foods has taken the GMP concept, and we've worked with them very carefully, and they're going to be bringing uh, GMP products to the market, starting with a, a really good tasting um, beverage or formula called Better Milk, and you have, you'll have an opportunity to try it here in the exhibits area. And Cambrook has improved on what we could do at the university in our research setting, giving their expertise in producing foods for the, uh, metab for the metabolic market. So I'm very enthusiastic about uh, their, their ability to go beyond what we have produced um, for our studies. Thank you. And uh, David and Lynn, would you like to stand up <laughs> after that? <laughs> Well, it wouldn't, go, it wouldn't go anywhere with having, you know, such talented people to make it happen and bring it to the community. So, um, so just a specific example about um, some of the GMP foods. So a cereal, a low phenylalanine cereal. Now, on your left, you see Cheerios, three grams of protein, almost 150 milligrams of phenylalanine. Not a good fit for <laughs> the PKU diet. Okay. On your right, you see what you have available now, which is a low-protein loops. No protein, two milligrams of phenylalanine. And I'm told it doesn't taste that good. Okay. Now, we have a cereal. We call it GMP crisps. And with a serving half a cup, three quarters of a cup, five grams of protein, 15 milligrams of phenylalanine. It's really good. <laughs> and um, the Michaud's granddaughter, Tia, has been helping us taste testing. And we sent her prototypes of this cereal. And Allison tells me that she really likes it. So this will be a very good product. And nutritious, a source of intact protein, not just sugar. <laughs> So to tell you about the research, six years ago, we started by asking the question, does dietary GMP support growth and control fee levels in PKU mice? We wanted to find out if it was safe first in the mice. Okay. And here we show that GMP supplemented with these five limiting essential amino acids provides a complete source of protein which supports growth in weanling mice. We see that mice fed GMP compared to casein as the sole source of dietary protein for six weeks showed nearly identical gain in body weight. This tells us we can make it nutritionally adequate with the slight amino acid supplementation. As expected, plasma levels of the large neutral amino acids, threonine and isoleucine, increased in PKU mice fed GMP compared to an amino acid diet with similar phenylalanine intake. Now, we expected this because the GMP has very high levels of threonine and isoleucine. We also observed that the PKU mice had a significant 11% decrease in plasma fee compared to the amino acid diet. And most exciting, we observed that the brain levels of phenylalanine decreased significantly by 20% in the PKU mice fed the GMP versus the amino acid diet. And we observed this in five different sections of the brain. This is exactly what Catherine Mosley was telling you about how large neutral amino acids in the humans, they measured a decrease in brain levels of phi, okay? And here with ingestion of the diet, we see a decrease. How does this happen? Well, 
the GMP provides a food source of large neutral amino acids, and these large neutral amino acids compete with phi in the blood for entry into the brain. Less phi gets into the brain, more threonine and isoleucine get into the brain. We also think this happens in the intestine for the absorption of amino, of amino of phenylalanine, which has been shown by um, Schindler and, and Madelon's research. So, f having found out in our preclinical studies that the, PKU, that the GMP was safe in the PKU mice and actually had a positive effect on phi levels, we moved on to our human studies. And with, with NIH funding, we conduct, conducted an inpatient metabolic study with 11 individuals with PKU. And the design of this study, the, the subjects followed their usual amino acid diet for four days at home. Then they were admitted to the hospital and continued their amino acid diet for two days. After these two days, they were switched to, for four days, so it was a six-day hospital admission, they were switched to a GMP diet in which all of the protein equivalents provided by their amino acid formula was replaced by GMP foods and beverages. Each subject could choose which product they wanted to use. Crackers, pudding, bars, different beverages. All food was provided during this 10-day period in exact amounts. It was a tremendous amount of effort for our metabolic dietitians, in particular Sally and, and Sandra Van Kalkar and, and Aaron McLeod, because um, everybody had their own menu. Nobody had to change amino acid formulas. It was a one-day cycle menu for 10 days, okay, to make it constant. And at the end of this period, uh, there were no health concerns. A physician visited the subjects each day. We had uh, chemistry panels. There were no health concerns with the GMP diet. And in fact, 10 of the, of the 11 subjects preferred the GMP diet to their amino acid diet and, and would follow it if it was available. We noted we took blood every morning after breakfast, and as we expected and similar to the mice, we observed that once you started the GMP diet, there was a significant increase in blood levels of the large neutral amino acids, threonine, and isoleucine. We did not observe a significant change in plasma phi levels with the GMP compared to the amino acid diet in this study. I'm not sure we expected to see a difference in only four, with only four days on the diet. Um, what we were really looking here is really for safety and acceptability of the, of the GMP. We then asked the question, does GMP improve protein retention compared to an amino acid diet? There's a great deal of high-quality research that shows that protein synthesis and nitrogen retention are greater. They're, they're improved when you eat intact protein compared to synthetic amino acids. And, of course, GMP is an intact protein. So this slide shows changes in plasma amino acid concentration with ingestion of a meal which is 80% synthetic amino acids and 20% intact protein. That's the blue line. This is uh, what the PKU diet is with the amino acid formula currently. About 80% synthetic amino acids, 20% intact protein. And this is, these, this is compared to intact protein. In this case, cottage cheese was used. So let me take you through this because this is sort of the crux of why GMP is better, <laughs> okay, in terms of utilization of protein and control of fee levels. So what do you see? Well, with the, the PKU diet, we see this sharp increase in plasma amino acid levels, and then we see this sharp decline. In contrast, with intact protein, we see lower levels of amino acids, which are sustained over a longer period of time. Now, this is because with intact protein, your body has to break it down into the amino acids and they have to be absorbed into the blood. This takes time. 
Okay? The synthetic amino acids, they go right in. Okay? So, where are the amino acids going so fast when you have that rapid drop in plasma amino acid concentrations? The body cannot store amino acids. It makes them into proteins, puts them in tissues, or it gets rid of them. And that's what happens. The liver takes these extra amino acids that are in such high concentration right after you have a lot of amino acid formula. It degrades them into urea, which goes into the urine, and they get excreted. They're gone. Your body can't use those amino acids. In contrast, when you have an, an intact protein and you sustain the levels of amino acids for a longer period of time in the blood, that means that those amino acids are available to the body for protein synthesis. Okay? And whenever you make protein, the phenylalanine goes into the protein and from the blood. That's just what you want to happen with your phenylalanine. Okay? So we'll go back to the GMP story in our study. We observed in our subjects that there were higher plasma amino acid levels and there was lower blood urea nitrogen after eating GMP compared with the amino, amino acid meal. What does this mean? It means after you have had a breakfast of GMP, you retain the protein. You still have the amino acids in your blood. You do not degrade the protein to urea. And so amino acids are in the blood for a longer period of time to promote protein synthesis and take the phenylalanine out of the blood into protein. Consistent with this idea that GMP improves protein retention and protein synthesis, we observed that after a breakfast of GMP compared to amino acids, we had higher insulin levels in our subjects. They weren't outside of the normal range, but they were higher. And this is important because insulin is the hormonal signal that tells your body to make protein. So all of this comes together to suggest that protein utilization and retention is much better with intact GMP compared to amino acids. And we knew that before with other intact protein, but we didn't know it in particular with respect to this protein, glycomacropeptide. Now, to end, I'd like to share um, our outpatient case study. And this study was really possible because of support from the PKU community, in particular MACPAD and the Tennessee PKU Foundation. Because at this point, we'd run out of money from NIH having done our inpatient study. And so we had one subject. His name is Matt. And he also has a really interesting story, a hard story. But um, that is shown on the TV segment, in the In Wisconsin TV segment. But Matt agreed to follow the GMP diet at home for 10 weeks. And so the protocol was to start with three weeks of his usual amino acid diet, and then he would go on GMP for 10 weeks, and then switch back to two weeks of the amino acid diet. We sent him the food for most of that period. Not all of it, but for most of it, and, and all of the GMP products, too. And Matt could choose what the GMP products that uh, would replace his amino acid formula. And he chose the sports beverage, a pudding, which is kind of a pudding yogurt sort of a flavor, and the snack bar, which Erica made for him. The sports beverage is kind of a, like a tang kind of a taste or a Gatorade. You know, it's not a real kind of bland and very thirst quenching. And he, he really, that was his favorite beverage, even though he had the choice of about four or five. And what we found with Matt is that Matt had a significant decrease in his plasma fee levels. Um, that was a 13 to 14% decrease in feed levels, and we measured that both with um, finger stick in, in the blood, and, but we also did venipuncture, and we got the same answer, that there was this significant decrease. 
very, very good result. That's what we thought would happen once someone followed it for a longer period of time. So we ask ourselves, why did math's blood feed levels go down? And I think there are two possible explanations. The first is the large neutral amino acid content of the GMP, and perhaps this reduced the absorption of fee from the diet, as has been shown by Madelon and Schindler in their research. That's one possibility. The second possibility, and I personally favor, favor this, they could have both been happening, is that Matt, like so many adults, had really struggled to follow his diet. And he would follow it in terms of taking the amino acid formula, but he never liked the amino acid formula. And he took that amino acid formula all in the morning. He'd get it over with which is the worst way to take it. You're wasting your money. You're degrading all those amino acids. It's out in your urine. Okay? But that's the best he could do. Okay? Now, with the GMP, it was completely different because he liked it. He liked taking the sports beverage throughout the day. It was satisfying. It's, it um, satisfied um, his thirst. Okay? He, he liked it. It was easy to distribute it. And furthermore, it's almost impossible to take all your GMP in one meal. Who could eat, you know, a cup of pudding, a bar, and, um, you know, a quart of, of a drink all at once? So just the nature of the GMP being in different foods forces you to distribute it throughout the day. And it's, it's well known. Uh, Anita McDonald in, in uh, Birmingham in England has done wonderful research in this area. It's well known that when you distribute a source of protein throughout the day, that you have, have better control of fee levels. And so I think this is one of the things that was going on with Matt. Okay? And if, if any of you have children who refuse to take amino acid formula you know, in their lunch to school, this is the same thing that's happening. You know? And um, if they're without a significant source of protein, from breakfast till 4 o'clock when they get home from school, you know, they're breaking down their own protein and releasing fee into the blood. Okay. So, now, in summary, we believe at this point, we want to do more research, and we're, we're trying to do a, um, a phase two trial in conjunction with Dr. Levy and Fran Rohr at um, Children's Hospital in Boston and the Wiseman Center. We believe that GMP improves the PKU diet. We believe this because it clearly enhances taste, variety, and convenience. And the most obvious to me is what Dr. Burton calls the wayward adult with PKU. Someone who has gotten off of their diet and can't get back on because they can't, can't consume that much amino acid formula. We had such adults in our study. Half of our participants were such adults. They could follow the GMP. Okay. Um, secondly, that GMP improves protein retention by decreasing the rate of absorption of amino acids and making it easy to space a low phenylalanine source of protein throughout the day. You know, if your child could take a GMP snack bar in their lunch or a carton of pudding, you know, whoa, they could have 5 to 10 grams of protein easy to support um, better control of fee levels during that time during the day when they're so active. And GMP may decrease phenylalanine levels in blood and brain due to enrich its enrichment of large neutral amino acids. Now, in closing, I would just like to sort of summarize where I think we're at with this. <laughs> and the PKU diet is not a low-protein diet. Okay. It's just that people with PKU right now are getting their protein from amino acids, synthetic amino acids in the form of formula, and they're supplementing that with a little bit of natural protein from fruits and vegetables, which are lower in protein. And this works out to about 80% synthetic amino acids and about 20% intact protein from natural foods. The GMP represents a new paradigm for the, for the uh, PKU diet because we are replacing the amino acid formula with GMP 
which is an intact protein with minimal phenylalanine that is enriched in large neutral amino acids. So that's our story, and I urge you to stop by the Canberra booth and to try it, see what you think, and give us some feedback. Thank you very much. <laughs>